Now, my next guest has just published her first novel based on her own teenage years. She also happens to be Mrs. Chris O'Dowd. Please welcome Dono Porter. How are you? Very well, how are you? I'm great, thank Good. you. Good. I was yeah. very much enjoying Jilly Cooper. Yeah. She's fantastic, yeah, isn't she's she? Yeah, she's pretty something. Yeah, she's great. Um, so anyway, now you're here and you're going to be even better, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> no pressure. You have them already. <laughs> so Dawn, you are actually calling yourself now Dawn O. Porter. Yeah, you were Dawn Porter since you married our Chris O'Dowd. Dawn O. Porter. Yes. You know, going with Dawn O'Dowd? Um, it? it just was never an option. I didn't want to change my name. Um, but I wanted to do something, and it started off as a bit of a joke, and I think, I think it was our friends first that started calling me O'Porter, yeah. or calling us the O'Porters. And then um, I had the book coming out, so I had this moment of, if I'm ever going to change my name, it has to be now. Uh -huh. So we mocked up the covers with Dawn Porter and Dawn O'Porter. And I just thought the O'Porter looked really good. Um, yeah. Now Dawn Porter just looks really boring. <laughs> totally. <laughs> but I think a lot of authors have that initial. So, you know, J.K. Rowling, those kind of things. So It's a bit different. I think that's different. Oh, you think I'm different from J.K. No, Rowling? I think I, I think she, no, I think she's J.K. Rowling. Yeah, I guess so. But You're or, not Dawn O. But it's initial. I, 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 although if you lived in Dublin, you'd be called Dawn O. I should have done Dawn O. Dawn O, how's it going? <laughs> I should have done that. Yeah. You can still do it. Look, just say to people that actually the O should be up on the, on the first line there. Dorno Porter. I'll do that on my next one. I'll take away the apostrophe. Yeah, yeah. So this is the book. It's called Paper Aeroplanes. And um, over here, yes. Have we got the book? Yes. <laughs> so we got, they've got the book. All right. So it's called Paper Aeroplanes. And it's, um, it's about uh, teenage girls. It is. But you do say at the beginning of it that you kept a diary when you were a teenager and a lot of it is kind of, it's kind of based on your life? It's Not based on. It's all, it is entirely fictional. Well, there's a lot of inspiration from my life. I had my diary from when I was 14, well, 13 or 14. So I read that and it just reminded me how I thought as a teenager, which it's horrible to be reminded how you think as a teenager. Why? Why but, you well, like? just because it's so excruciatingly embarrassing. And, you, you know, you'd, you'd, you'd meet a boy and there was... No logic instilled in me yet not to believe that that wasn't the person I was going to marry and have babies with. Okay. So it was obsessive talking and it's almost quite stalkerish. And you're like, I hope I didn't do this out loud at any time. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it just reminded me how for a teenager, everything you're experiencing is kind of the first time. So your love, your friendships, the pain, the good stuff, everything is just, you've got no life experiences to, um, to make it not feel like it's the most important thing in the world. And that's what my diary reminded me of. Yeah. But the book has actually set these girls are 15, um, 15, 16, so slightly older than my diary was. But um, it's, it's set in a school that's obviously like the school that I went to in Guernsey in the 90s. And one of the characters, Renee, is very obviously inspired by me. Her hmm. family setup is quite similar. But, um, which, which is that uh, Renee's mother is, is dead and yeah. they, they don't really talk about it at all and your mother died when you were very young yeah as well, my yes. mum died two days before my seventh birthday same as Renee's did and it's right don't do the R's and um and um it was for me it was really cathartic to write about that in fiction because as a teenager I like I don't really mention it much in my diary at all which is really interesting I think I was just powering on through and was kind of just thinking nope 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 and just getting on with you know whatever I had to get on with and so to go back and fictionalise a little girl who is 15 but is a little girl who was going through this thing, it just reminded me what I'd actually been through and was a real... I was able to put closure on something that I'd never really put closure really, yeah. on. Yeah. It was a really good thing to do. Write a book about any problems you have. It's, it's a good thing to do. Um, and so in the book, I got to kind of, um, you know, talk about myself and my feelings towards that through Renee. <clears throat> the other character has quite a bad relationship with her mum. And I think there's something incredibly vulnerable about young girls and any woman who can't rely on her mum, whether that's because she died or because they just don't get on. And that's what the story is about. So these two girls don't have that 
automatic that, that support balance, person yeah. in their life yeah. and they need each other. So it's a love story about a friendship, but um, because they really didn't think they had anybody else and they find each other. Yeah, and it is, it's a lovely book. I'll admit, I, I was reading a lot of it in public because um, I was on holidays, I was reading it on the beach, and I felt like a bit of a pervert reading it. For, <laughs> but there you go. Um, because they, they're, they're, they're quite racy, the, the teenage girls. Can I, I just wanted to ask you about your, your mother. Your mother died of breast cancer, yeah. is that right? Yeah, she did. Um, so she would have been two years older than I am now. So probably yeah. getting diagnosed around now and being told that she wasn't going to survive. Wow. And um, it's a big part of my life. Is I it, do yeah. a massive part of my life. I do, I do a lot of work with cancer charities. Um, try and raise a lot of money and my main thing is awareness. Breast cancer is one of those cancers where if you catch it early, you, chances are you're really going to be all right. And most tumours in the breasts are found by self-examination. So I'm just all about reminding people to check themselves. And, and are, you, um, are you at greater risk or anything because of your mother dying? Yes, definitely. I, did, I, had, the, I had a gene test um, to see if I had the BRCA gene and I didn't have it. But the fact is, my mother and my great-grandmother died in their 30s of breast cancer, so maybe I don't have that gene, but there's obviously something going on within my family. So I have okay. a high risk, but, you know, all you can do in life is find out that you haven't got the gene that they know how to test and then get on with living your life. Right. Um, so I, I, I wouldn't fully understand this now. Angelina Jolie, did she have the gene? Is that she why she did what gene. she did? Yeah, so okay. when you find out that you have it, you have something like an 80 or possibly more percent chance of having getting breast cancer. You, I was faced with the possibility that I might, and in the same circumstances, I think I would have done what Angelina did. It's not something that you do lightly, but yeah. um, it's a small sacrifice to live a life without being frightened all the time. And obviously, she's got children, and you want to do the right thing by them. I thought she was extraordinary coming out and saying that she'd done that, because I think especially someone who is considered a sex symbol and who has all that money, who um, ne no one ever had to know, People didn't need to know. The only real reason to ever talk about that publicly is for the better good of womankind. And I just think she's now portrayed herself as kind of okay. uh, just remarkable. And listen, the fact that you're... <laughs> Angelina will be heartened by the support of her audience. <laughs> Should we be watching? Hi, Ange. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think... That it, is the fact that you're coming up to the age that your mother died at and the age that... Would, and, and you're at the age that she probably got. Does that kind of weigh on you in your life a bit? It does. I think, it, I think about it all the time, but I've always thought about it all the time. And I think when... It's not a negative in my life, because it makes you ha be very determined to live a great life. If, ever, if I died tomorrow, I could never say that I hadn't made the most of my life. And that's, yeah. that's the way that you, you live it when something like that has happened to you. That's the way that I live it. And so... I'm very aware of the fact that, you know, she, she was in the situation that she was at my age. I'm just, you know, I check my breasts regularly and just try and stay on top of it. And I've done enough research into breast cancer now and I've interviewed a lot of women who, are, you know, who have it. I don't have it. I'm very lucky. I interviewed women who had weeks to live and I've interviewed all these people who have got through this and not got through this and um, it's just about being aware. So. It's in the back of my mind, but I think it's only a positive thing in my life at the moment. Good. Keep, keep you living. And another positive thing in your life is, of course, that you married an Irishman. Very positive. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, He's what... nice. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't, I didn't realise. You met online, essentially, yes? Um, he introduced himself to me on Facebook. I'd, I'd never heard really? of him. Yeah, his, Chris's Facebook picture is of an old lady. <laughs> and, um, and this old lady kept asking me to be her friend. <laughs> so I was just like, no. Old lady just emails me and goes, or Facebooks me and said, could I take you bowling? <laughs> <laughs> no, no old lady. Um, so I, I was also, I was seeing someone else. We're living out in LA, I was seeing someone else. I was, knew that relationship was over. I'd kind of had it with guys for a while. This guy keeps emailing me, asking me to go bowling. And I was like, no, no, no. And then I had my 30th birthday party. And I'd only lived out there for about a year and I didn't really know that many people, so I didn't think anyone was going to come. So on, he happened to message me on the day of my party. So I said, yeah, come to my party and bring all your friends. <laughs> so he came at about midnight and I was dancing with my dad. And, um, and I just remember him walking in with this wingspan and just going... <laughs> he, I promised him I would never do that on the television. And, um, do it once more. Hey! 
no, no. <laughs> and, um, and anyway, he came in and he just gave me this huge hug and we danced and then he left. And I was just like, who's that guy? And, and you then, didn't know who he was at all. No, at this point. no, I didn't. I no, I googled the heck out of him the next morning though. And um, and I, my sister was staying with me at the time, and I woke up in bed in the morning, and I just said, um, Jane, I think I met the guy I'm going to marry last night, and I had never said that in my life before. Oh. And um, six months later, he'd moved into my apartment with me. Wow, that's lovely. I can't get I, rid of him. <laughs> And we should make it clear that he was not like Hollywood Chris O'Dowd at that stage, right? No. You got in when his stock was yeah. low and you backed He was him only or... Roy from the IT crowd at that stage. Yeah. And, Still, um, at that stage, he shouldn't have had to have been... He was enough of a celeb that he shouldn't have had to have been stalking women on Facebook. I'd never seen think? the IT crowd. Um, really? But, yeah, I'd never seen it. And um, so I didn't know who he was, so I guess that's... I'm sure a lot of people did. What was weird is that we'd been in L.A. for a few months and then we came back and we went to Glastonbury. And it was our first kind of outing together in the U.K. And in Glastonbury, he was so famous. And I was just like, oh, my... You're, you're really famous! And I had no idea. Yeah. Because when you don't see a TV show yourself on TV, you, don't, you just don't know who the people are. So he was just Chris to me. And then we came back to England. So that was my first insight into the fact that he was quite well known. And then, and then it, bridesmaids has it, has came it, out. Has it been weird watching then what's happened, his, his life, like, and being there for it for the last few years? Actually, no, cause, because... Um, I, he, because he, he wasn't really famous to me at the beginning, we've really gone through it together. Yeah. And um, I'm really glad we got together at the point that we did that was just before he became Hollywood because it just meant that we got to experience as a couple. So it's not been strange because it's been quite gradual for us. And are you in with the celebs now? Like, you... So in with the celebs. Wow. Because, <laughs> um, for example, he's done that, he's, d he's done that um, animated film that Beyonce has done a voice oh, yeah. for. Well. And she apparently, according to the tabloids, thinks he has a sexy voice and all this. And you love Beyonce. I love Beyonce. So are you know, in with the Gwyneth, Chris Martin, no. Beyonce, Well, no, Beyonce, a, a few last week, he was doing a junket for this film, Epic, very good. And um, he said, you should come along because Beyonce's going to come. I was like, Chris, don't flatter yourself, Beyonce's not going to come. So I went home and he texted me and said she's going to be here in five minutes. I was like, I'm half an hour away, I can't get there in time. And then the next thing I get is a photo of him and Beyonce, his arm a, around there, her. There it is, just to <laughs> upset you again. It's actually my screensaver on my phone because um, I, I was pacing the house, pacing the house until he got home. Then I just, so I said to him, what was she wearing, what was she wearing? He's like, oh, just jeans and a top. And I look at the picture and she's in the most amazing trousers. <laughs> I'm like, you can't just tell me she's wearing <laughs> jeans and a top. That's such a boy's answer. But yeah, apparently she was lovely and they got on great and he cracked loads of jokes and she laughed at all his jokes, obviously. <laughs> and, um, and yeah, I, I'm just kicking myself. I know there is one thing you want to clear up, isn't there, while you're on uh, Chris's home turf, so to speak. Because did you say during the week that uh, you said he was a bad, husband <laughs> no did you not say he doesn't do any housework or something no what happened was i was on a radio station and they were saying to me give us some dirt on chris and i was like i don't have any he's really nice so can go on give us some dirt on chris and i was like all right then he, it's not great at washing up next day it's all over the papers <laughs> i get home Hang and he's literally got his marigolds on <laughs> 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 and he just goes hmm not very good at washing up huh <laughs> He's a Hollywood star now. He doesn't have to do the washing up. Do you think Jay-Z is making Beyonce do the washing up? <laughs> so anyway, you've cleared that up. He's, he's, he's a fantastic he's a husband. husband. He's perfect. OK, That's and listen, the book is great. Paper, Thank airplanes, Donor Porter. Lovely to see you. Ladies Thank and gentlemen, Donor Porter.